But when we get to math, if the operations are kind of written sloppily, a student will be scanning and these three look so similar that they may not even recognize that this is addition, division, and multiplication. They may interchangeably use them and that's difficult. So one way to, to fix that would be to use clay and build them with your hands, but also when you're doing the actual math, slowing down and circling the operations. Another directionality thing that comes up are sixes and nines. Because they're such visual thinkers and they can spin um, objects in their mind and see them from multiple angles, sixes and nines can be really confusing. And they may even think six, but write nine on their paper. And so that, again, is something that you have to explicitly teach. And that handwriting on your back part can really help them. And even three and five are a little too similar. The top part here would be really easy to reverse. And so again, practicing that with the gross motor can help. But as you get older, this can become problematic. This in the eyes of a child with dyslexia is the same. And so we have to help them visually see that there's a slight difference, that this is a superscript up in the sky and this is not. And that's really important. So the other thing with the visual processing is think about our worksheets. This presentation style of a worksheet is the worst. It's confusing and it's overwhelming for our students, especially because the items are all written so close together. And a lot of our students with dyslexia also write really sloppy. They write really big. There's not enough room for them to do their work here. So this interaction too between the short-term memory and the spatial tracking on this page can cause a student to copy work wrong even. So they may have it next to them, but they're transferring it over to another sheet of paper. It is likely they're going to lose what numbers they were writing over here on this page. It's really, really difficult. So to help with spatial awareness, um, this again is bit paper. We turned on the grid view here. What I love about bit paper is you can make the grids as big as you need. So the student has plenty of room for writing. And we put out near point references here. So this particular problem was working on three. So we put the multiples of three to the side and then those buttons for the students to use to help them remember the steps. And then everything's in column form. They can clearly see where that number needs to go. It needs to go inside this box and they don't miss uh, align things, which is really important. And then with the graphing part, again, we love bit paper because I can make this graph so much bigger if we go back to this example, this graph is borderline too little for a student with, with dyslexia. They need bigger graphs. And so we like using bit paper for this reason. We can make these boxes as big as we want. I think this particular size is a 60 by 60, which is really helpful.